We're going thrifting. We're going thrifting. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. As you can tell, Karen Lavender Clothesline. I am definitely home from vacation, definitely back into the swing of things. It is 97 degrees right now and it is early, so I am headed out to Goodwill. Hopefully their AC is pumping and I am just going to spend some good old fashioned thrifting time there and looking for, what am I looking for? I want to do a little bit more clothing than what I've been doing. I've probably been listing, I'm going to say between mm, 70 to 90 pieces of clothing a week along with the hard goods. I'd like to up the clothing I'm doing. So this is because I'm really looking forward to having less shipping time, but uh, we'll see. Of course, I'll pick up hard goods too. All right, let's get into Goodwill. Let's see what we can find. Hit that like and subscribe button and let's go thrifting. So as you might have guessed, we are in Goodwill and from across the store, I saw this beautiful blouse. This is Tolani. Tulani has a lot of silk and beautiful quality fabric pieces and one of my favorite blouses is Tulani. So anytime I find it, I pick it up. Here I'm finding a second pair of Liberty jeans. So today is Thursday when I'm thrifting and I found one on Wednesday, same exact size and pair. Well, not the same pair, same brand. <laughs> So I wanted to show that to you, and I will show pretty much everything in a whole video. So as you can see, I've started already putting a few things in my cart. I'm not exactly sure what this piece is. I'm guessing a lampshade of some sort. If you know, leave it in the comments down below. Beautiful glass, definitely vintage. The opening is threaded. So this would actually screw on and you can see $1.99. And like I said, I'll show most of these pieces in a haul. Here is a plate that I found. I did find two of them. This is uh, made in Jerusalem and definitely vintage, just gorgeous. These seashells I'm going to be putting back. Um, I picked these up because anytime I see a bag of shells, I do grab them. And the one that I'm pointing to, the spider con, I think it's called, um, sometimes I look those up. Here's just a glass dish I threw in my cart. I'll be putting that right back. And a set of 10 plates, Hans Christian Andersen, that I will talk about in the haul. The lamp on the top shelf that I'm zooming in on is just gorgeous, vintage, mid-century, modern, but I really don't want to deal with big lamps, so I pass that by. And right next to it, I see a little Disney lamp. Now, if this was in better condition, I would have grabbed this, but it did have uh, paint on it. So in this part of the video, I'm going to be showing a lot of how many items, how much merchandise is coming into this store. Recently, I talked about trying to get to your biggest thrift store if you are serious about thrifting. Big stores get more stuff. <laughs> Here, just a little clutch purse catches my attention. I felt this was very cheaply made. I think that said Le Charles, not even sure. Made in China and the outside was very dirty. The clasp was very floppy and poorly made. So even when looking at items that aren't branded, I'm looking for real high quality, better made pieces. There's quite a bit of this type of item on the shelves, silver embossed, and unfortunately it doesn't bring a lot of money. So almost always I say no to pieces like that. But I do look at baggies. I have found amazing items in baggies. I have found jewelry, um, sterling silver cutlery or flatware. So I try always to make a point of looking at baggied items. Here's a little baby cup. I'm not sure of the age because it has a plastic top as compared to a metal top. And I'm trying to make out what that says, but I don't have my readers on because I'm filming. 
It's a whole thing. But I put it in my cart to check it out and, um, and then buy it from there if it's something that I want. I have not purchased a lot on the black aisle. To me, if I did electronics or, you know, even things like computer bags, I would probably be on this aisle more. There I'm checking garden gloves because I happen to need garden gloves right now, but $1.99 was not a good price. Here I'm showing this picture because this is horrible quality. Do not pick up anything like this. It's just like a, I don't know, a ceramic piece that somebody painted, very poor job. So I did show it so you guys could see it. Here is one of the red carts um, that has the new merchandise that gets put on, onto the floor. Our Goodwill is great. This is the big Goodwill. They bring the cart out and put it over to the side so people can look through it and then they put it away. So in the upper left corner is a snow village I wind up taking and I don't know if I have that in the hall or not. It's just one of the regular Christmas Village pieces, but I believe it's Department 56, so I always take a look at those. Here's a very heavy paperweight, I'm gonna call this. First, I thought it would have been a napkin holder, but it had no slit, so I'm not quite sure what that's about, but I left it behind, way too heavy. I don't sell a lot of games and I'm sure I'm missing a lot of money there, but I cannot count pieces. And here right away, I'm spotting this pottery piece. It has applied work. Applied means that the pieces are formed separately and then attached to the vase or to the piece. I very much liked this, but the damage was too great in too obvious a place. I'm not sure what this is called, if there's another name besides applied. Uh, if you know what that's called, leave a comment down below. I would love to find that out. Here was an interesting piece. Now this is just a molded uh, cookie jar made from a mold and painted. And I really <laughs> am trying not to pick up cookie jars. What am I selling? But I thought that was really good. A tree trunk with mushrooms and raccoons, but it had too much damage. I probably would have picked that up, truth be told. Fake apples. I have sold quite a few fake apples, but only the real high and realistic fake apples, <laughs> not the cheap plastic ones. There is so much inventory in this store, it's just crazy. Here I'm finding a doll that sometimes when they're in the box, it causes me to take a second look, but almost always no. I do still pick up dolls, it's rare. I pick up the ones that are very vintage, French, even doll parts. Here was my favorite hysterical find of the day, rocks. They're real rocks. They didn't do anything else. They didn't hide a key. They didn't, I don't know what that was about. There was no price on them. So that has to be my funniest find of the day, rocks. Sometimes I stand back and just try to take it in and see what my eye gravitates towards. This is Sakura, Debbie Mum. Uh, these don't bring a lot of money, but I always look at different teapots. I don't buy a lot of teapots, but I do look at them because some of the ceramic ones can bring very good money. I did put that in the cart to run a comp. I always run a comp on any kind of ceramic teapot. There's a little hedgehog, I guess, uh, mug. The silver cards, these multi-tiered cards, are also new inventory coming out on the floor. And as you can see, the shelves are just crazy loaded. So it does take hours to go through everything. I thought this was good. I thought it might be Capitamonte. Um, this is, again, applied and cherries. I thought it was good, but I was kind of like not feeling it. Like, why would somebody want a vintage made in Japan cherries? you know, little figurine type thing. 
not really a figurine, but piece of piece of art. Okay, this box with the birds I loved and very bad damage. If this was in good condition, this would have went in my cart really quick. So as you can see, it's lined with kind of like a burlap material. This is meant to have a handle on it. I don't know if these were originally sewing boxes or a little handbag. It's quite heavy for, you know, for a handbag, but um, I would have bought that if it was in better condition. So as you can see, the majority of this will wind up going next door to the bins. And unfortunately, most of it will not be purchased. <laughs> I'm really loving the pig motif today. I think I found like two or three different things with pigs on them. I wonder what color is the slowest moving aisle for sales. It has to be white or clear, I would think. Here is a little Luigi toy. It's Mario Kart. And I wind up putting this in my cart. And truthfully, I think I wound up buying that. <laughs> it could be. And I am magically transported to the linen section. So here I am just pulling out whatever, oh, I found something. Whatever is catching my eye. I knew right away this would go in my cart and I keep going. Do we love this? Yes, we do. Super thrilled to find this. I will show that in an upcoming haul right after this footage. I do wind up getting both of these pieces. This print here is usually Waverly. Sometimes a similar print is Ralph Lauren, but that one was Waverly. Waverly Home, I think it is, is sold or was sold in Kmart, wasn't it? Pretty sure. Okay, so here I'm finding the tag and showing it to you guys. This is cuddle down. I don't find a lot of cuddle down. So I'm not real familiar with the brand, but I know it's a nicer brand. And here is the duvet cover. And I'm searching for the tag to see if I can get it out. And my suspicion confirmed, Lily Pulitzer. How could that print be anybody else? Do we love Lily? Yes, we do. I have always liked Lily prints. They're just so happy. I do find the clothing way more often than I do the linens. I would like to learn a little bit more about glassware, but I don't know that these types of books would be really any help to me. This is more about pricing, but I do put it in my cart to take a look and see if it was something that would be worth my time. And I didn't feel like I'd be able to retain or learn a lot about glassware from these books. I would like more of a how to identify glassware, you know, the different brands. That would be helpful. And I turned the corner after looking at those books and putting them back, and here we are, glassware. <laughs> See, no, I can't tell you who made that. I wouldn't know if that's Libby, or I wouldn't know who that is. Imperial, there's just so many glass companies that I could really stand to improve my knowledge on glass.
So here I'm finding three Barbies. You can see this one is upside down in the box, so they have been opened. And with Barbies, I have to check every one. I'm not real knowledgeable, other than I know there are Barbies that bring very good money. Most of the times, in my opinion, the ones I have really gotten good money for are the very vintage ones, 1950s and 60s. But to find them in the box, even though they're $9.99, I'm definitely going to put them in my cart and run a comp. And if they're not good, I will put them back on the shelf. This next item, Soloflex weight straps. I wasn't quite sure what weight straps were, but for $4.99 and the name Soloflex and the box has the book and the bands, absolutely yes. This is a piece of gym equipment that many people bought. There was a lot of advertising for it. And even if this is vintage, I will always go ahead and pick up items that have to do with weight lifting. So for $5, this is a sure bet. I don't even know if I bothered running a comp. I always say yes. And you can see where I get my strength from. <laughs> I am drinking a McDonald's coffee. If you notice my cart is empty, it's because I've checked out and I'm starting over. So what was really catching my attention is this little stone house cookie jar. And each time I have to talk myself out of picking up cookie jars. Cookie jars, in my opinion, are a lot of work to pack and ship. It's two separate pieces, minimum, all the wrapping, all of the, and they're very breakable. So I do leave that cookie jar behind. Just scanning, always scanning to see what's on the carts being rolled onto the floor. So I do wind up checking comps on the Barbies and the money is not there, but I decided to put them together with two other Barbies on the top shelf for maybe a young girl or boy that comes down the aisle and is just thrilled to see them. All right, stay tuned for the haul video. Go out and get what's yours. Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. This is Karen Lavender Clothesline, and it's been a little while since we've done a haul together. Today is a hard goods and a clothing haul. Figured I'd throw on things that I'm finding and kind of mix it up a little bit, like sometimes I do. So first off, thank you so much for tuning in. If you're new here, my name is Karen, and I am Lavender Clothesline on YouTube, Instagram, and eBay. I'm a full-time eBay reseller. I earn my living that way and now I'm adding to my bank account with these YouTube videos. So thank you so much to those of you who are following, liking, subscribing, ringing the bell notification, all the things. I appreciate it. It really helps my channel out. So today we're just going to get right into it. I am home from vacation and I came home on Saturday night. Monday morning I was at the thrift stores and uh, it was quite crowded. Hmm. <laughs> the whole the whole store is not mine. I wish it was. That is a dream come true. All right, we're going down a rabbit hole. Some people want to win the lottery. Some people want to win a cruise, win different sweepstakes. My dream is to be locked in for like probably overnight in a really good thrift store and have access to the whole back of the uh, of the warehouse of the store. I would pay for everything, but that is my dream because the competition is fierce at my Goodwills and my other thrift store. Today is Goodwill Day. Today is Goodwill Delivered. And I'm going to share with you the things that I picked up. Not as big a haul as I normally get. Normally I'm getting probably about two carts at this point. Years ago I used to get four or five carts. I haven't done that in a while. But I'm really happy with what I picked up. Very interesting items. Some things I know and I have picked up before. And some things I really know nothing about. So I'm using my judgment and running comps. A comp is where you type in what you have into the search bar whether it be in Google another selling platform or eBay itself and you compare your item to what has sold so today we're gonna to do that I'm gonna let you know what I paid for things as usual and we're gonna see what we think items can flip for 
My story is doing really well. I did shut down for vacation for all in all, almost a full 14 day period. And uh, I came home Saturday night. I turned the store back on before I got on the plane and the store is selling. We are in a slowdown period. So June and July, part of August are my slowest months. But then once late August, early September hits, we start seeing a spike in sales. Always love that, very exciting. All right, can you tell eight years in, super excited to be back at work, feel fully rested, had a great vacation. I went to a lot of music jams, I ate a ton of good food, hung out with Melissa and Barry, that's my daughter and my son-in-law. I went to the beach and swam a lot. What else did I do? Went on a date that was very fun with a guitarist. So I enjoyed that, but you know, he's in Florida, I'm here. So we'll get together when I go down there. But yeah, really happy to be back at work. Thank you so much for all of you tuning in. Let's get started with the first item that I picked up at Goodwill. So the first two items that I wanna talk about to get them off the table are linens. You guys know I love picking up linens. To me, they're very easy to pop into the washing machine. A lot of times I air dry the linens so I can guard against shrinkage as much as possible, especially if they're vintage. These two are not vintage. I will be washing them, not washed yet, and putting them in the dryer, but keeping an eye not to over dry them. The first item, I think I caught this um, in the prior part of the video when I was in Goodwill, and I think we all know this type of print right away, Lily Pulitzer gorgeous gorgeous this is a duvet cover let me see if i can grab the tag real quick with most linens like this your tag is going to be on the side so the opening to the duvet cover is here it'll either be buttons or snaps i've never seen a zipper and the tag will be on the side seam if you want to see the branding almost every brand does that so we can see that it is lily and then this side has Lily Pulitzer, and this is exclusively for Garnet Hill. I love Garnet Hill linens. Now, I don't know if on this tag, there's a little tag by it. I was going to say if on the tag had the size, 100% cotton, made in Portugal. I love Portugal linens. And does it say Garnet Hill? I'm not seeing the size on this. I might be looking right at it. Size King. Oh, that's really good. So a King Duvet cover, I paid $4.50. I'm imagining this is gonna bring close to the $100 mark. I haven't thoroughly checked it. I did check it in the store for any big stains or rips or you know, really, really not good stuff, but uh, it seems really clean like it was barely used, if at all, and I did drape it over a shopping cart. But again, I will thoroughly inspect this to make sure that it's in great shape. I'm gonna stand back a little bit with it so you guys can really appreciate the print. And like I said, Lily Pulitzer's prints are great and very identifiable. Now it's my understanding that all of Lily Pulitzer prints have names, you can look at them. So for this, I would put this into a Google search. I would say Lily Pulitzer, I would name the colors, and then I would try to describe what's going on here. So I would either put in floral, um, I might do coral. There are some seahorses on it. It's a little seahorse, so I would put that. And then when the images come up, you look for your pattern and find the name of the print. That helps a lot with Lily Pulitzer items that you know the print, but even if you don't have it, Lily Pulitzer has such a following that uh, most times, almost always, I sell items very well from Lily. I don't know, I think there's been a couple times where I had some dresses and they were like a size zero or a two. I sat on those for a while, but linen should do really well. And I think this is my first duvet cover. So very excited for this first find. The next linen item is a bed sheet. And again, a sea life or seashell print. This thing is gorgeous. Now, I did not recognize the print when it was on the rack, but the minute my hand touched it, I knew it would be good. So I'm gonna stand back with this fun print. I really like this print. So as you can tell, it's all different seashells. And who is this put out by? This is 
cuddle down C U D D L E D O W N all one word and it gives you the different um, specifics standard 100 so I don't think this is 100 thread count because the thread count is really nice on this I think it means that it's a hundred percent cotton and it is a full so that is the size now a lot of bedding these days is full queen I think prior to a certain year, I don't know what year that was, there was just full and then queen and king. Of course, twin or, um, you know, that size bed. So it went twin, full, queen, king. At some point, I think they always put full and queen together. So I'm not sure if this is vintage. I will have to do research on that. But either way, beautiful sheet. And I paid $4.50 for this too, which is kind of a mystery because Goodwill normally charges $2.00 and 50 cents so it might have gone up a full two dollars or it could be that they recognize that this is a beautiful sheet that's probably the case now when I was in Goodwill yesterday so this week I was there Monday Wednesday Thursday today is Friday morning I'm filming for Sunday their prices went up again it's like Goodwill's prices have gone up I'm gonna say literally five or six times in the past year just crazy it's like just give us the increase and let's get it done with instead of just nickel and diming and they do not announce when the prices went up so I was shopping in the store I was there for quite a few hours the prices went up while I was shopping got to the register and <laughs> everything I had put in my cart was raised so now I'm paying five dollars for a blouse when I started thrifting blouses used to be 225 I sound like an old person right like back in my day <laughs> good old prices but still you know how can I complain I get a lot of good stuff at Goodwill it is a good cause it funds people being trained for jobs for employment so I'm not going to get into who's making what money I like shopping there my Goodwills the employees are lovely and it's one of my favorite stores there it is now are there things that Goodwill can improve absolutely we want to go back to being able to return items that we pick up that have problems all right end of that rant let's keep going before I get on the whole thing. I'm going to throw this pair of shoes into the hole. It's the only pair of shoes that I picked up, I think all week. Might have gotten one other pair that are already listed. And these are Toms. So as you can see, a suede booty. And the front is perforated with a small dot design gorgeous fringe. Fringe is a real attractant for me. Anytime I see fringe on a jacket, on a well-made item, on a shoe, on a boot, on jeans, I always look at it because when you have something with fringe in the title, it definitely brings the buyer. So if you're listing clothing that has fringe, whether it's like a shimmy skirt with a little fringe on the bottom, absolutely use fringe as one of your keywords. All right, so these are Tom's. What size are these? They are a size nine, I think. Let me check the other one. Hmm, I thought this one was an eight and a half. I could be wrong. No, thank goodness, they're both nine. I paid $7.47. I have no idea of what these are gonna bring. I don't sell a lot of Toms. There was a time there, couple years ago, I'm going to say five, six years ago, where Toms were really hot and anything you picked up with Toms would sell. It's cooled down a little bit, but these are gorgeous. The quality is gorgeous. And there is the branding on the back. Hopefully that shows. So I imagine probably 40, 45 for these. The next items, I'm just going to mix it up. I'm just going to pick up whatever my hand picks up and we're going to go with it. I'm not going to do all the figurines together or all the home decor together. We're just going to mix it up and see what I talk about. So the next thing on the table right by me is Solo Flex. These are the weight straps. Now, did I know what these were before I picked up the box? Nope. But when I opened it and I see the booklet, and this has to do with weightlifting. It goes to the Soloflex um, system and these weighted bands are in here. I didn't even have to run a comp to know that I was picking these up. $4.99 is what I paid. So that is what that looks like. I will check the box to see that the count of what is in here, the pieces, is the same as what this book 
um, states. That's the only thing I'll do. I don't clean stuff like this or any of that. And I think these will do quite well because a lot of people not only owned this originally, this system, this system got a lot of airtime on television. It was a popular piece of equipment to buy. And I think the vintage ones still do well. So um, I'm really hopeful for this. I'm guessing probably 30 to 40 on this also, but I have not run comps. So that could be different than what I think, but my initial judgment, that's what I'm thinking. So $5, let's say into 35, that's a win because they won't break in shipping. Gotta love that. All right, next up, <laughs> something that I always say I'm not gonna pick up anymore, plates. So look at these plates. Now, while I do pick up China, you know, different dining plates, I have a tendency not to pick up decorative plates that would get display that have some sort of either movie star on it or it's Norman Rockwell. I don't pick up any of that. Why did I pick up these plates? Very good question. When I come home from vacation, it's a thing. I'm all rested up. I'm ready to tackle the world. Give me a couple weeks, I'll be exhausted again. <laughs> and I'll be like, oh, plates, I'm not picking up plates. These are the Hans Christian Andersen plates. So my ring light is going to kill that. Let's see if I can come in diagonally. So this is the Emperor's New Clothes. I have a bunch of these. This one is the shepherd, shepherdess, shepherd dress. How do we say that? It's a girl shepherd. <laughs> shepherd dress, shepherdess. I can't say that word. Shepherd S, shepherdess. There we go. <laughs> that took a while. Uh, and the chimney sweep. So as you can see, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten plates, and I paid five dollars. Fifty cents a plate. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. So I'm not sure what each plate will bring. I would imagine, depending on the theme or the graphic, these will be varying amounts of money. I will have to research these. Won't be hard. I will just put in the Hans Christian Andersen plates, and then um, in that search, just keep changing to see roundabout. I'm guessing between 15 and 20 a plate. So even 15 a plate, 150 to turn five dollars into 150. Absolutely. I will sell these singularly because I don't feel like shipping 10 plates. It's just too much work at this point. But if I, you know, wake up in the morning and a plate or two is sold, it doesn't feel like angst. If I wake up and 10 plates need to be shipped together, kind of over that. But um, okay, so Hans Christian Andersen decorative plates. Next up are Bibles. So I picked up the Everyday Life Bible. This is Joyce Meyer. Now, if you have not um, had exposure to the Christian world or the Christian famous speakers, evangelists, stuff like that, Joyce Meyer is very well loved, very well respected uh, for women's ministry. And she actually has her name on this Bible. That is a great honor. And this Bible is in gorgeous condition. So it does have the gold edging on the leaves, and you can tell how much somebody has read their Bible by how much gold is left on the edge of the pages. This looks unread brand new. Lovely. So books I am paying. I think they considered this a soft cover. I don't know if Bibles have a separate price. I don't think so in Goodwill. I think I paid either 99 cents or $1.97, one of those two. And off the top of my head, probably 25 to 30 for this one. Love selling Bibles, love it. What do I look for? I look for the bonded leather or real leather cover. So the cover is like the flexible cover. I don't pick up the Bibles that have a hard cover because they don't sell through as well for me. I always pick up the ones with bonded leather and I look for Bibles that have like different features in them. So this one has notes and commentary by Joyce Meyer, something special about it. But I will pick up just your ordinary Nelson Bible as long as, like I said, the cover is the flexible one, not hard covered, and the inside is good. If there is a little bit of inscription on the first page or two, fine. If it's heavily marked or like drawings or a lot of highlighting, I leave it behind. Next up is this little art glass piece. So as you can see, it is a teapot and it has the flowers inside. So this is Millefori. And I love this because inside each calla lily, I'll guess, is a fixed bubble. Amazing. So that is what that looks like. Great shape. 
I paid $1.99 for it and I do not see a marking on this. It might have a marking. I would have to get either take a picture of it. Nope, no marking. It's just the brushed um, look of the glass and I'm going to have to go by what it is. Now, I don't see a lot of teapots, so hopefully the search will be a little bit easier. So $1.99, I'm guessing probably $25, maybe $30, something like that. Um, I have a couple of pieces of pottery. Let's jump into pottery. I saw this pot on the shelf. This to me has a very like primitive southwestern flair to it and this is a fairly decent decorating trend right now still. You can see it's a hand thrown pot. And the bottom is signed but I can't tell the signature. I've looked at that quite a bit. And what did I pay for this? $2.99 for this. I'm thinking this will probably bring about $25 to $30. So that is the first piece. Second piece is one of my favorites. I love this drip glaze. See how this looks like the paint was dripped and it is glazed over a beautiful colorway. I absolutely love this. I have another one in my store that has sat for a while. I have to say it's a shorter one, not as nice as this one, but I don't mind holding on to these. A lot of my pieces, if I have to hold on to them for a while, I don't even give that a second thought. I know a lot of sellers, resellers, that doesn't work for their business model. And like I always say, that's the great thing about selling on eBay, that everybody can do their own thing. We can look at what somebody else is doing and kind of glean from you know what they're doing, take a little bit, make it our own. I love pottery. I don't mind sitting on this. This thing is gorgeous. And this one is signed, I think it says Campbell. C-A-M-P-B-E-L-L. -L. So I will look that up. I don't think that's somebody famous. I think it's a student piece. I could be wrong about that. And I said yes to it. $2.99 for this. And I'm thinking about $20 to $25. All right, we have cats. <laughs> so a big lot of cats came out. And I was like, I have the cats because all the resellers were in the house and everybody laughs because nobody pays attention when you call out something when they're bringing it out. It's whoever gets to it first. So everybody was looking at the cats. There was a young man there. Well, he was probably young 40s. That's a young man to me. And he was grabbing cats. I'm sure he did not want you know, porcelain cats, but he saw me grabbing them. So he said, oh, if Lavender Clothesline is grabbing them, I will too. But I need to grab these two. These are left in. Look at those faces. Love these. They are gorgeous. Let me see. I think their eyes are brown or a deeper color. Left in uh, figurines are beautifully painted. There are higher end brands that are also beautifully painted. But when it's a figurine, I don't know a lot about it any kind of pottery like that. I go by how the thing is finished, how it's painted, what amount of detail was accomplished. So this is the sticker. Now these do have a little bit of marker on the bottom and I did try rubbing that out with a Clorox wipe. I tried alcohol and I tried Goo Gone. It's not coming out so I'm just going to leave it there and just close it. You can see the left tin sticker. I believe this is Japan. Yep, Japan. And one little kitty does have a very slight chip, it's this guy, on his ear. But it doesn't ruin the silhouette or the outline of the ear. So normally I try not to do chips, but I thought these two should be purchased and bought together, and I'm gonna sell them together. All right, while we're doing figurines, we'll do this little guy, or these two little guys, I should say. How sweet are these? Two little rabbits sitting on a music box, which works, but I will not wind it up because sometimes YouTube is so sensitive for what uh, trademarked or copyrighted things you put on your video. I do not want to become um, demonetized where they take away your funding. My funding is doing really well on YouTube and they just told me that the sponsors are paying me more because they like my channel. So yay, <laughs> that's always encouraging. This is Otagiri. O-T-A-G-I-R-I, -I, Japan again. That's what it looks like. Beautifully painted, just so sweet, and I said yes to them. I paid $2.99 for this little music box, and I'm thinking $25, a solid $25 for this. 
All right, any more? Up, oh, last one. Last one, which is my favorite. This pig. I hope this translates how angry a face this pig has. Now, if I was going to collect, I always say this and I always change it, but if I was going to collect like little animal figurines, pigs would definitely have my attention. I I've never been a pig person. I mean, <laughs> I won't even go there. I just think they're hysterical, especially when they look grumpy. He's so funny. He's so mean and so like upset with the world. So again, this is left in and has some numbering. And I think that says 1985 and all kinds of marking. I don't see any chips or cracks, which I was thrilled. When I see something like this, I'm like, oh, please don't be broken. It just breaks your heart when you find something that's super good and then it's, you know, all destroyed. But um, he's in great shape. So yes to left in pigs with angry faces. I believe I paid $1.99 for him. No idea what he will bring. It's really a she, just looking at that. Yeah, that's a girl. And I'm thinking, you know, if I had to guess, it's got to be over 20, 25, I think, unless they're super prolific, but absolutely take a chance. And you know what? In the end, if I really couldn't sell this, I'm okay with keeping this on my desk until it does sell. So uh, yes to angry faced pigs. Okay, so I'm going to do one or two more hard goods. And then I wanted to talk about clothing a little bit. Basically, a lot of the clothing I'm finding is bread and butter. So I know some of you want a clothing haul. I feel like sometimes a clothing haul would be really boring because it's just racks of clothing of like, this is a Talbot shirt. I bought it because it's, you know, I, I kind of don't get excited about clothing. But there are a few brands that I wanted to show you that I am picking up and share them with you in case you find them in the thrift stores that I feel they're a good solid brand to pick up. So let's finish hard goods a wooden bowl with a gorgeous painted daisy design. Now this won't bring a ton of money, but I would never leave this behind. And what does this say? Augustine CV somewhere wood something or another. I can't even pronounce all of that. I think it's Mexico. So that's what that looks like. I really like things like this. I think it fits into a boho aesthetic, farmhouse country. And um, I paid a dollar ninety nine for it. And what will I ask for this? I'm gonna guess between fifteen and eighteen, something like that. And my buyer always pays shipping. The next piece I got really excited about. There were two of them. The other one was very cracked and glued together. And sadly, I put it back. I will not pick up stuff like that if I know it. This is a painted plate from Jerusalem, nineteen thirty seven. So this thing is gorgeous. I fell in love with this. And you can see that Jerusalem is written down here with the date. Let's see if that'll pick that up. It's pottery, so it is a stoneware plate and just stunningly beautiful. I think this is gonna do well. I have not comped this, $2.99. And like I said, the other one was just as beautiful, but the whole thing was like cracked and, and like mosaic put back together. And I don't know what this is going to bring. I have no idea. Now, it does have a little bit of texturing from the time that it was fired. But I don't think it's going to hurt it that much because it is so beautiful. All right. This piece here, a silk little purse with a pearl design and a pearl kiss clasp. So when it does that, oh, this one doesn't make that much noise. I was trying to get it to pick up, barely. Um, and when you open it up, silk inside, just beautiful. Now another reseller who doesn't watch my channel, Vince, who sells at the Roots Flea Market, picked this up and I was teasing him. I said to him, you don't want that purse, give that to me. And he was kind, he did give it to me. We will trade off things, I will offer him things most of the resellers that are in our Goodwills are just such good people to hang out with. I've made so many friends. We all help one another out. We watch each other's carts. If we find something that the other person may want, you know, we'll say, hey, there, do you want this? I love not only the reseller community, but the community where people are buyers and sellers. I love when people are kind. And yeah, it's a really great group of sellers. So thank you, Vince, for the purse. 
I will be selling it. <laughs> I will not be carrying it. My stuff would not fit in here. Literally the other day, okay, down a rabbit hole, I had to dig something out of my handbag. What handbag did I have? I think I had the, what is it, Michael Kors one or whatever. I'm not a big handbag girl. And I had a pair of shoes in a, in a garbage baggie, like in a um, grocery bag. And I had a half a sandwich. I had my water, always my water. And I cannot tell you how many things. It was truly like a clown act at a circus because I was digging for something, you know, food coming out, it, hysterical. So this type of thing would never work for me, but I love it, beautifully hand beaded. What did I pay for this? I paid $2.99 for this. I don't know what this is going to bring. I will probably price it around $30 to $35. All right, for real, the last hard goods that I want to share are these trays. Now, when I saw these sitting on the shelf, I didn't even care where they were being made or whatever. Look how good these are. Are these good? Yes, they are. I love these. And the thing that I love about them, which I didn't even know when I pulled them off the shelf, let me see if I can put this down so I'm not breaking anything. Okay, <laughs> I just got so excited and I hit into the camera. So these are marked Made in Hong Kong. And Hong Kong, when it's marked Made in Hong Kong, is the 50s, 60s. So true mid-century modern. I think that will help these greatly. And I paid for them individually. I think this one was $2.99 and $3.99. So figure about $6 together. And I will be selling them together. I'm going to keep them together. Now, sometimes I split things up. Sometimes I keep them together. I think there's no real rhyme or reason. If I buy a big lot of like little tchotchke -y things, whether it's figurines or keychains, I have a tendency just to spread it out on the board, take a couple of photos and be done. I don't really have the time to do each individual little thing by itself, unless it's like, you know, golden diamonds. <laughs> But things like this, I have a tendency to keep together. I think it's very appealing to offer two trays. And this would be beautiful as wall art. Uh, my daughter Melissa puts up wooden fish on her bedroom wall. I'm gonna try to ask her to send me a photo. So I love pieces that are meant for serving up on the wall. Now we're not talking decorator plates, but we're talking things like uh, wood, different trays, different wooden pieces. You get the idea. And um, so I'm gonna keep those together. And what will I get for those? I have to look up if there is a big price difference, setting the price for trays that are made from Hong Kong, the Hong Kong period, rather than just made in India, I would imagine there is. So uh, a lot of buyers who are metalware collectors, those type of things are important to them. All right, so on the table, I grabbed a couple of pieces of clothing I wanted to show to you guys to prove that I still pick up clothing. I think the majority of what I pick up is still clothing. So just picture the hard goods that I'm bringing in, probably three to four times that in clothing. And like I said, a lot of the clothing that I pick up is bread and butter. Sometimes I find interesting pieces, vintage pieces, or pieces that we know are very well branded and will bring very good money. So what I have are one, two, three, three, four pieces we're just going to look at. I'm going to tell you why I bought them. The first one is a pair of men's overalls. Stick back with it. And these are the company Liberty. A lot of times with vintage clothing, you can tell it's vintage by the union made tag inside. So when you go inside the item on the side seam, mostly on the side seam, there'll be a little white tag and it says union made. That's a clue that it's vintage. A lot of times made in USA. Now some clothing is still manufactured in USA, of course, but when you see an older tag, you really don't have to be that educated about clothing to recognize Made in USA with the old style tags that it is vintage. I love these Liberty overalls. I do very well with them. Now, these are costing, I think, a jeans price. Jeans just went up. They were $7.95, so I'm thinking jeans have to be close to $9 or $10 now, but the overalls, definitely worth it. I have stopped picking up women's jeans altogether, and I am paring down what I have, just letting it sell through. Men's jeans I still pick up, depending on the brand. A lot of Levi's. Levi's men's jeans are probably still my number one brand to sell uh, a few other brands but nothing really of note so liberty jeans 
let's say I paid nine dollars for them I'm thinking probably 45 for these and the best part is I found these on Wednesday when I went yesterday another pair so I think the owner donated two pairs and I was the lucky recipient to get both pairs all right so that is number one number two I looked at for a while so I came across it right away I see that this design is sewn the whole thing is embroidered so at a lot of times when there is a fake when somebody is faking a good brand that amount of work won't be put into it now that's not a hundred percent sure but the more work you see go into an item the more likely the higher chance it is that it is real this is Lamborghini the car brand so on it it says automobile it's really automobile because Lamborghini is Italian, right? And then Lamborghini all stitched. Here's a men's track jacket. This is the label. I have never found Lamborghini before. So I pick up clothing for any type of luxury car, race car, anything like that. So I will pick up like Mercedes, uh, BMW, anything that has that emblem, that logo on it. But the thing I really liked and really convinced me about this jacket is the zipper tab and I always check the hardware. When you're looking at something trying to decide, know that higher end brands almost always will brand or mark their their hardware not always sometimes it's the yyz zip yy uh i can't think of it it's a zipper with yyx or yyz on it that's that's sometimes used but this lamborghini has branded the zipper tab right there that's engraved by a machine Let's see if i can get that too and the inner tag is correct so if this was a bigger size, if it was a windbreaker jacket or an outdoor jacket, two to three hundred dollars easily for a pre-owned jacket. Because this is a smaller size, it's a men's small, it's an Italian small, so it's it's quite small. I would think that this is vintage, this I have to check that. I'm gonna say this will probably bring a solid fifty to seventy dollars very good condition so really happy find with that and what do I pay for sweatshirts I think sweatshirts they're still charging a sweater price so don't quote me on that I don't know what the new price is I'm gonna guess six dollars somewhere around there all right the next brand I pick up anytime I see it which is hardly ever hardly ever find this brand so I'm going to show you what these are So this is a boy's ski pant or snowboarding pant and this is the branding. So this is Arcteryx, so it's A-R-C apostrophe T-E-R-Y-X, I think I'm saying that right, Arcteryx, and it's got this little dancing, I don't know, it's a skeleton of a, an animal, I'm not going to guess what animal, dinosaur, I have no idea. Beautiful, beautiful quality. If you find Arcteryx, you want to pick it up. Even if these had a flaw, I would pick them up. So these did have dirt on the back. I washed them and just gorgeous quality. So this is a children's pair of outdoor pants. I think I paid, I'm going to say $4.25. And imagine, okay, boys won't bring as much as the men's. If this was men's, easily $125, $150. Boys, probably a solid $60 to $70. I was thrilled to find them, and they're in great shape. Just checking that my battery is still good. Last item of the haul, this is BB. Now, BB is a hit miss for me. I still pick up BB items if they're either heavily branded like BB and rhinestones across the chest or if it says something as cute as this shorts romper. Look how cute this is. I don't know if this, this camera is going to pick this up. It is a lace daisy design bell sleeve. How 60s is this? I mean, this wasn't made in the 60s, but this is so cute. And it's in new condition, beautiful. So I went ahead and grabbed this. I imagine this is a woman's size, I didn't even care. 
So what does that say? Made in China, size, looks like it's a six. Size small. I think that's what that says. I don't have glasses or magnifying. But um, I picked this up because it's so cute. This won't translate as well on the hanger on the floor flat lay as I would hope. This would be great on a model, so I will look for it on the model, but I won't use uh, the brand's pictures. That's a real serious no-no to use a company's photos. Photos are copyrighted. They belong to that company. That's all I'll say about that. I have used them in the past, but then as I caught on to like, wow, that's really stealing me using their pictures. I have stopped doing that and I've tried to take it out of any um, photos, any photos I had used that belonged to them. I think I've pretty much cleaned my store of any of that and that was a couple of years ago. All right guys, that is my crazy haul. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for helping my channel grow and as always, go out and get what's yours.